Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I'm using some stamps from Concord and Ninth. I'm using the Give Thanks stamp set as well as the Barnwood background stamp. And this is part of a month long blog hop that Concord and Ninth is doing. They're sort of having one person each day of the month feature some of their products and today is my day. And the thing that's cool about this is that there is a $20 gift card to Concord and Ninth's shop up for grabs at my blog. So if you want a chance to win some money to spend in their store, please head over to my blog. There's a link in the top corner. Starting out with that Barnwood uh, background stamp, and I'm prepping my cardstock first before I do the stamping. This cardstock is Nina Solar White, and this is the 80 pound version. I just ran that EK Success powder tool over the entire surface of the cardstock in order to prepare it for heat embossing. I'm going to use some Versamark ink on top of the stamp and then press that piece of cardstock down onto the stamp. This is the easiest way to use large background stamps like this because it keeps the background stamp very even and flat and it gives you the opportunity to take another piece of paper and place it over the top and then you can use your fingertips to press that cardstock into the stamp and it ensures that you get a very even impression. This is the easiest way and the most efficient way to use a large background stamp like this, especially if it's a clear background stamp that you would normally, uh, if you were to stamp it like you normally do, you'd have to remove it from the backing sheet and put it onto a very large block. I'm going to use some Ranger Clear Embossing Powder and I'm sprinkling that on over the entire background here and then I will tap the cardstock on the back to uh, kind of shake off all of the excess. So after that was on there I used my heat tool and very slowly and efficiently it melted the heat embossing powder until it was smooth and melted. I actually had it tipped in the light so that I could see when it turned shiny and then I knew that all of that powder was melted. Otherwise, it's sometimes hard to see clear embossing powder on top of white cardstock. So I'm using uh, some Distress Inks today, and that's why I've got my craft sheet out on my work surface. Um, I think that blending onto um, a project from a craft sheet is a little bit easier because it's a slick surface. So I'm going to speed up the video here. I wish I could blend inks this quickly, but in real life, it's just not possible. But I'm going to walk you through it. I used First, I used Squeezed Lemonade Distress Ink, and now I'm using some Worn Lipstick. These colors blend beautifully. Then I'm going to switch colors and move on to Seedless Preserves. And this is going to give a nice intense purple shade. Um, See those preserves, the color has a lot of red in it, so it blends into red tones really, really well. I'm now using some chipped sapphire, and chipped sapphire is sort of a purpley blue, so it's a great transition color from purple to blue. And then the last color I'm using is Peacock Feathers. And this is kind of the same deal where it's a little bit on the greenish side, but it has blue, so it will help transition those colors. So I cleaned off that craft sheet to get all the ink off and then went back and blended some of those colors once again. I realized there was a lot of yellow right at that end and I wanted to get the colors in the middle to have a little bit more space. So I just went over those colors one more time. Then after all that was done, I cleaned up my craft sheet once again with just a baby wipe. And then I just moved that baby wipe to kind of a clean section and wiped over that clear embossing powder. And that just takes off any of that ink that was sitting on top of the embossing powder. It reveals that white underneath and it gives a really good contrast between the white embossed areas and also the color blended areas. So I'm chopping off just a little bit off each side so that the finished size on this is four inches wide by five and one quarter tall. And then I'm going to stamp some sentiments from that other stamp set. And I'm prepping some vellum here and then stamping the sentiments in Versamark ink. I'm using three different stamps from the stamp set to build my own greeting. And I'm stacking the words so that they're positioned just right so that I can put them on top of my background piece that I've already created. 
I'm adding some embossing powder. This is Rich Pale Gold Embossing Powder from WOW. This is my most favorite gold embossing powder because it's not too much of a yellow gold. It's almost more like an antique gold. It's a little bit more muted, and I really like that. I don't like the really kind of brassy, um, orangey yellow golds. I like this tone of gold really much more. So after I heat the, heated that with my heat tool and it was smooth and melted, I moved on to adding some gold onto the edges of my background piece as well as the vellum piece. I realized that I thought about, you know, adding some hearts or something to this card, but then I really liked how simple it was and how it really let those colors from the ink blending stand out. And so instead of adding hearts onto this and possibly covering up even more of that background, I decided that I would just add some gold edging to all of these pieces. And that was just enough of a detail to make me feel like it was finished because other than um, adding hearts on top or things like that, it looked a little bit too simple and stark for me. But adding little details in like this really finishes things off. So I dipped the edges of each of these pieces into my gold embossing powder and then hit, hit that with my heat tool. This is an advantage to having your heat embossing powders in containers like this. You can really um, kind of dip your projects into the container. So I'll hit that with my heat tool until it's completely melted. And then I'm going to go ahead and place the, the vellum piece on top of my background. And I'm going to hold it in place with a few pieces of post-it tape. I've, I think I saw someone do this in the past. I'm not entirely sure, but um, I'm not sure why I never thought of doing this. I've done this technique where you wrap vellum around a piece of cardstock before, but it always slides around. Well, why not just tape it down long enough to get it folded? And I think that's a great way to get this folded and not have it slide around and possibly um, be folded when it's all skewed to one side or the other. So I'll use some Tombow Extreme Adhesive, just a couple strips of that on the back of the vellum to adhere that down onto the background piece. And I'll go ahead and add two more lines of the adhesive on this side as well. This is just going to make, so, make it so that it doesn't slide around or lift up from the card. And then I'm going to remove that post-it tape and my card is almost complete. I'm going to go ahead and prep the card base. The card base is made out of Nina Solar White. This is the 100 pound version now, so it's the same cardstock that I used for the main background piece, but it's heavier, so it's a little bit better for a card base. Put a bunch of foam adhesive on the back of that, and then press it down onto my card. That finishes the card for today. Just a reminder, head over to my blog for your, a chance to win that $20 gift card to Concord and Ninth. And thank you so much for watching. You'll have a couple days to enter that giveaway. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later for another video. Mm -hmm.